For me, it was really hard to ask for help uh, growing up, especially in high school. Um, and then, you know, when I joined my self advocacy group over in uh, next town over Morrisville, uh, you know, that kind of really helped me find my voice and speak up a little bit better for what I want and what I need. And, you know, it, it's definitely a key cog to what Green Mountain Self Advocate is all about. Um, and it, it's fun, it's really fun. Um, I'm, my name is Jeremy Gordon, I'm 23 years old. And I live in most of a month. Biggest accomplishments were um, I was the first kid in my family to graduate from a public high school. Uh, I was homeschooled for many, many years. So I was the first kid in my family to graduate from public high school. Um, and then back in 20, I can't remember when it was, 2016, I think it was, I, uh, I graduated from college. And I was only the third person in my family to graduate from college, so. What was your favorite memory from Johnson State, I believe you went to? Yeah, uh, favorite memory. Wow, there were some good memories on campus. Um, even some not so great memories, like getting beat by the women's point guard 75 to 10. Um, I made some really uh, good friends. Um, got involved in uh, an university uh, Christian ministry. Went out to cool uh, retreats down in uh, New Hampshire and Maine and Boston. and. Really made some friends, but if you ever have the chance to go to college, I would absolutely recommend it. About your job, mm -hmm. I know you're working. Um, tell me a little bit about that. What do you do for work? Because I work at Riverbend Market. Uh, it's a cute little convenience store gas station. I actually applied there a couple years ago, a year and a half ago, and he actually wasn't hiring at the time. Uh, and so I did this three-week trial period, and he actually hired me like week one mm -hmm. or two. Uh, and so I kind of started off with one day a week, and then I almost quit because my check was so low. And then I found out that I got free coffee for working there, which is an awesome bonus. So I went in, and he offered me an extra day. And so I started working two days, and then eventually got bumped up to five days, stocking the cooler, um, taking the cycling out, going to the bank, uh, cleaning the gas pumps when it's warm out, cleaning the bathroom, which can be fun and can be disgusting depending on the day. Um, I think they treat me really well. I mean, so I pick up one guy who actually goes to Johnson State mm -hmm. and he, he called me a coffee thief because I go in and <laughs> take coffee. He's like, well, why don't you just move me to the basement? <laughs> uh, Probably the biggest, this is more of a, from a paycheck standpoint for my job. About a year, about a couple months ago, I cracked $2,500 uh, working there. And I've only been there not even two, four years, so. Mm. That's probably the biggest accomplishment. The other one is the first paycheck I got, I went and took my mom a coffee at her, at her job. Because mm -hmm. I was proud of myself. I do belong to a church. Uh, it's called the Lamar Valley Church of Nazarene over in Johnson. Um, it's a really good church, I like it. Uh, I have a friend of mine who actually from Johnson State, he's a maintenance guy, and they started a faculty mentor program there. And he's a Christian, he was a Christian, uh, one of the guys that got partnered up with me, so he'll give me a ride on Sunday. And he buys me a cup of coffee from Cumbie, and we just talk. The worship team is awesome. The music is really good. Um, and then they have a Sunday school class that's geared for college kids uh, around my age. So being there with other, you know, young adults and talking, getting into these little, little mini debates about what we're reading. And it's interesting. Just really interesting. Now, you're a self-advocate. Mm -hmm. um, you belong to a group uh, called Gats are getting acquainted through uh, self-advocacy. Mm -hmm. What's it like being the president of uh, Gatsa? It's fun, but it's got its challenges. Um, there's definitely times where, you know, I like it, but there's times where I'm like, okay, this is just absolutely ridiculous. We're getting off topic. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a hard time trying to get him back on track. So I kind of look to some of the other allies in the group to kind of like 
help me out. Um, but it's a great group of people. Uh, we have three really superb other officers besides myself that are on to help out. So it's, it's a really fun. I think the biggest piece of advice is if you're struggling with something else on not a meeting day, like we have a meeting today, go over and talk to like an ally and be like, okay, so-and-so is, you know, saying this. Feel free to ask for help. That doesn't mean like, you know, you're a bad leader. I go bowling, there's a group of people from my agency, they go up to the bowling alley in Lowell and we'll bowl. Uh, the guy's been great to us. Um, he even gives us free, on like Christmas week he gives us free games of bowling. Um, I, have a, I have a Wii so I play some video games. I go for walks. I'm also doing horse therapy which is kind of, not, it's more therapy but it's a fun therapy because I love horses and it's just yeah. really relaxing to be around a beautiful animal. I'm also very active in Special Olympics, like as you know. Uh, big basketball player, uh, so I think sports related. Raymond, when you turned 18, your family decided that you would be your own guardian. Yeah, tell me about that, just tell me about how that That happened. actually, it was actually Social Security was gonna say, no, he can't be his own guardian, because we won't give him, it would, we, they started filing for Social Security, they said that he needed, to, I needed to have a guardian. Um, or they weren't going to give me any of my, my benefits. More or less, it was kind of easy. Uh, there was some hard part. I turned to my mom for advice about stuff, you know, banking, obviously, budgeting. Um, but other than that, it was pretty, pretty seamless. Uh, high school kid, about to graduate high school, and mm -hmm. wanted some more independence, so. So I have four sisters and two older brothers, one currently in prison. Um, Sorry to hear that. And then I have a brother in Massachusetts, I have a sister in Iowa, and then my two, my oldest sister, my oldest sisters, they're twins, live down south next to my dad, and my youngest sister is down there too. So yeah, we have a, there's seven of us in total all adopted. Of course, I was the baby of the family, and then Tiffany came along and kind of ruined everything. Mm -hmm. um, I love her to death though, I wouldn't. We give each other crap, but you know, siblings. Siblings will do that to each other. Um, I wouldn't want anything to happen to her or any of my family members for that matter. Yeah. So back in June, my mom was re-diagnosed with esophageal cancer that had spread to her lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. um, and they said with treatments, with chemo, uh, she might have two years. Um, so that was actually on the same day I got re-elected to President of Gatsa, so that was kind of a big day. So that was kind of on my mind, and then eventually she took to take the time off of chemo. Uh, and then she had a stent put in her esophagus that could she would get food stuck uh, that led to a feeding tube. And then eventually the kids were just so aggressive, they just went right around the stent into her stomach, and there was nothing they could do about it. I was fortunate enough to, on the day that she passed away, to go down to the hospital. She was in the ICU uh, on a respirator because her heart had stopped twice the night before. And I was fortunate enough to see her uh, before she passed away. Uh, she wasn't, she just looked, she was 60, but she looked like she was a lot older. Um, and that was definitely hard to see. Um, I can't, went out to lunch and had a Heineken, because that was her favorite beer. She loved Heineken when she drank. Uh, I went home, and then later that night, I got to text my stepdad that they pulled the respirator, um, and that she passed. Actually, I had a friend of mine, this kind of off topic, I had a friend of mine who was another consumer from the agency, he went out and got a sympathy card, and he went around and got all of the uh, support staff in our DS wing and some other people and some other consumers to sign it, uh, which was the, which was nice. And then having people that you could just like talk to, people just checking in, seeing how you're doing. I have a therapist on two meetings on two days, and you know, just making sure that people are doing okay. And, future, like, do you have any dreams? Uh, you know for the future? Um, well, currently I'm working on getting a girlfriend. That's a big, <laughs> big goal of mine. Uh, probably getting, I don't hate to say it, but getting like an actual apartment apartment with her. I mean, I love living here, but, you know, venturing out a little bit more. And yeah, no, I think just the, the girlfriend and maybe getting my license eventually. Mm -hmm. Be the two biggest. License, driver's license? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else about you 
that you would like to just share? You know, when it comes to sports, I'm out there competing as hard as I can. Uh, I'm a hard worker. Uh, I strive for at least the top, and if I can't get to the top, at least second best. So, you know, joining a group like like getting acquainted with stuff for advocacy is if you're not sure about it. Like I, I was skeptical about about going to the first meeting. Um, it, it's just go, uh, be a fly on the wall. I went to my first meeting a couple years ago, and I didn't speak. Well, I spoke a little bit. I introduced myself, but that was about it. Um, and then eventually, we got a little more and more comfortable uh, going. Which is something we see happening with our group these days. People, you know, we get people coming out of high school that are starting to, to join. Um, not talking a whole lot, but they're, you know, getting their feet wet and kind of, you know, starting the transition. Uh, so definitely just go and take it all in. And if you have questions, you know, there's people there that can help. The, uh, the president or, if you're, or, you know, someone else who's in a leadership role that could definitely answer all your questions. So, yeah. One thing to keep in mind is we are people too, uh -huh, and we have feelings, um, and you know, also, you know, don't talk about us behind our backs, or, you know, assume just because we have a disability that we can't do, you know, do stuff, you know, just presume that we are capable of being awesome, uh, and that we are we're people, we have feeling that we can do, you know, what people without disabilities can do. Sometimes we can do it a little bit better. Um, so that's the one big takeaway I hope you guys get from this video.